everyday science teacher where it's all about science. In these videos, you will learn how to conduct science experiments and learn concepts about science along the way. In today's video, we're doing part three of the series on electricity. In part one, we talked about static electricity. In part two, we talked about conductors and insulators. If you haven't seen those videos, there will be a link in the description box so you can go back and watch those videos and conduct those experiments. In today's video, we will focus on the light switch and we will make a flashlight. If you're interested in this, then stay tuned and have some fun with me today. The materials you will need for today are two batteries, D size, paper towel roll or toilet tissue roll, scissors, insulated wire, paper clip, a mini light bulb, cardboard, small piece, and masking tape. me turning the switch up and turning it down. You observed that when I turned the switch on, the lights came on. And when I turned the switch off, the lights went off. How does that exactly work? Well, the switch regulates the electrical charge that flows through the circuit. It depends on what position we place the switch in whether we place it on or whether we place it off. Let's look at a switch that I created. To make my switch, I used the small piece of cardboard, paper clip, and I used two push pins. And I put those together and made a switch. Now, I also put together a simple circuit again. Remember when we make a simple circuit, we have to have our cell, which is the D battery. We have to have our insulated wire, metal um, bulb holder, but you do not have to have this bulb holder in order to do this. And um, I put it all together to connect because to make a complete circuit, everything must connect. Now, if you notice the light bulb, it is not on because even though everything looks connected, the only thing that's not connected is the switch. And so since the switch is not connected, the bulb is not on and the flow of the electrical charge is not flowing to give us current electricity. But let's test it out and see. Now, I put the switch in on position and we have light. If I pull it back, the light will go off because the circuit will be broken. Let's explore. In part one of the Explorer, we're going to look at a hand generator. If you observe the hand generator, you notice that there is not a battery on the inside, but there is some coil copper wire and we have a magnet. And when we uh, shake this hand generated uh, flashlight, the magnet is going to pass through the coil and then it's going to hit down here where it's going to connect to produce electricity to get a current flow. So we're going to take the hand generated flashlight and we're going to shake it using kinetic energy, energy in motion. So when I shake it, notice the coil 
of the magnet is moving up and down through the coil. and the flashlight will stay on longer. Now the flashlight does have a switch and currently it's off. But let's turn it on to see the electricity flow. And if you observe again, you notice on the inside the light bulb is on. We're going to turn the flashlight off by the click of the switch and break the circuit. Power plants use some of the same concepts to produce the electricity. Many energy sources are used to spin turbines and rotate coils of copper wire inside the magnets to generate electricity, just like we did with the hand generator. Let's look at part two. Get your materials together and we're going to make a flashlight. Step one to making our flashlight is to take your 2D batteries and tape those together. When you place the 2D batteries together, make sure you place positive and negative sides together so that they attract. So, you want the flat end and then the end with the little part that has a little rise on it. Those two to go together and tape those really well. You may pause the video at any time to do your steps. Step two, you're going to take an insulated wire and a paper clip. Take your insulated wire and coil it at the end of the paper clip and then tape it together. Once you have this part complete, then you're going to take it and tape it down at the end of one, one end of the battery. So it looks like mine. Next step, take your mini light bulb and another insulated wire and you're going to take the wire and wrap it around the light bulb. When you wrap it around the light bulb, then you want to tape it. Now make sure you leave the bottom part exposed. Take your last piece and tape it, your light bulb and wire. You're going to take the light bulb to the top of the battery. Make sure it is touching and connecting. Now before you tape it down, do a little test to make sure the bulb will come on. Sure, my own will come on. Okay. Last, we're going to put our made flashlight into our cardboard holder. We're going to take it and make sure the piece of wire here shows. And we're going to tape it together. I'm going to tape some of my pieces here down of the wire. I test my switch to make sure I didn't cover it up. Okay. I didn't cover up too much. Let me pull a little bit out. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, there we go. Okay. We're going to take another piece of tape and tape this part here. Okay. Let's loosen it up just a little bit because you don't want it to touch. And so now you have your flashlight with the switch. And when you press on the switch, your flashlight will come on. Notice that we have a complete circuit. 
everything's touching and the electricity is flowing because the switch is allowed it to flow and turning the electricity on and when we let go the circuit is broken I added some foil at the end just to give it a little bit more decoration and you see my flashlight now it has more of an uh, a flashlight look and you can add uh, aluminum foil at the end uh, you could get a paper cup and cut the um, bottom off like a Dixie cup and add to it and notice I'm just clicking on and off in 1909 an inventor and chemist named Leo Bakelin he invented true materials which is an insulator called Bakelin for homes, electrical switches, and electrical outlets. Now that you've learned about switches, I want you to make me a list. What properties are needed to make a good switch? And how would an engineer determine if materials, what materials would be used to make a good switch? If you come up with an answer, leave me a comment below. I hope you enjoyed making your flashlight today and that you're going to share with others how they can make a flashlight. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video so we can have more come over to our community and learn all about science. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. See you next time.